Joy in Service, August 10, in Heavenly Places. Whosoever will be great among you, shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest, shall be servant of all. Mark chapter 10 verse 43, 44. It is in a life of service only that true happiness is found. He who lives a useless, selfish life is miserable. He is dissatisfied with himself and with everyone else. The Lord disciplines his workers that they may be prepared to fill the places appointed them. Thus he desires to fit them to do more acceptable service. There are many who are not satisfied to serve God cheerfully in the place that he has marked out for them or to do uncomplainingly the work that he has placed in their hands. It is right for us to be dissatisfied with the way in which we perform duty, but we are not to be dissatisfied with the duty itself, because we would rather do something else. In his providence God places before human beings service that will be as medicine to their diseased minds. Thus he seeks to lead them to put aside the selfish preference, which if cherished would disqualify them for the work he has for them. The Review and Herald, May 2, 1907. There are those who desire to be a ruling power and who need the sanctification of submission. God brings about a change in their lives. Perhaps he places before them duties that they would not choose. If they are willing to be guided by him, he will give them grace and strength to perform these duties in a spirit of submission and helpfulness. Thus they are being qualified to fill places where their disciplined abilities will make them of great service. Some, God trains by bringing to them disappointment and apparent failure. It is his purpose that they shall learn to master difficulty. He inspires them with a determination to make every apparent failure prove a success. Often men pray and weep because of the perplexities and obstacles that confront them. But if they will hold the beginning of their confidence steadfast unto the end he will make their way clear. Success will come to them as they struggle against apparently insurmountable difficulties, and with success will come the greatest joy. The Review and Herald, May 2, 1907